Hey everybody, welcome back once again. Colin Weaver, these are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day, where each and every time I come at you, I'm bringing you two questions to continue studying for your CISSP exam. Let's do it. Question number one of the choices that I'm gonna put up for you, what I wanna know is which of them is not a benefit of a first hop redundancy protocol uh, configuration in your, enterprise in your enterprise routing architecture? So FHRP, which of these is not a benefit of FHRP? Go ahead and look those over, think about it, click pause when you're ready, click play, and I will walk it through. All right, FHRP, if you're not familiar with that acronym or first hop redundancy protocol, is all about creating highly available networks. You take two or more routers and you configure between them a virtual router that virtual router will have an IP address, and one of those two nodes, usually, will actively respond to things sent to that virtual IP address. The benefit of this is that should the active router fail, the secondary router can stand up and take over the active router role. So you have one they're typically called standby and one called uh, active is, is the terminology you typically use for it. But the whole idea here is that the computers that are being supported by this router will only have one default gateway um, in their configuration. And that default gateway will be the virtual IP address that the two routers are providing. And then the routers, in effect, back each other up. If the active router becomes unavailable, then the, the standby steps up and becomes active. And if you needed to take the active offline for some reason, you could manually go in and preempt the active and uh, have the current standby become the new active. And then you could take the, that other router offline and do whatever you need to do and then stand it back up. Um, it doesn't just have to be two routers. It can be more than two. But um, there's also three variations of it uh, that you'll probably see out there in the world because FHRP is actually a concept. It's not actually a protocol. Um, so the actual protocols that are out there for this, there's one called HSRP, which is the Hot Standby Routing Protocol. There's VRRP, which is the Virtual Redundant Router Protocol. And then there's GLBP, which is the Gateway Load Balancing Protocol. And there might even be more than that, and I just don't know them off the top of my head. So anyway, taking that bit of information, let's walk through the answers. First answer choice is, hosts always have at least two gateway IP addresses to provide fault tolerance. That is definitely not a benefit of using FHRP. In fact, that is something that you would absolutely typically not want to do. If a node has two default gateways, he in essence has to choose between them and we don't like end nodes to be able to have to do such things. So it's pretty common, pretty normal for a node to just have a single gateway. And when we're using redundant routers by creating that virtual router, that actually has the IP address, that's the way that we accomplish that because all the nodes are gonna to point to the redundant or the virtual IP address. So that's the benefit of that. So that's actually the right answer, but let's just walk through these other ones to make sure we feel good about kind of what this whole redundancy thing is gonna do as far as creating high availability for it. Second answer choice says that the routers uh, share a virtual IP address so that either one of them could use the address. That's true. Um, they actually both have their own interface IP addresses but there's this third address, which is the virtual router's IP address, and the two of them share that one. And one of them is typically active on the address while the other one is, is passive, or one is, one is active and one is standby. And the, the terms will change, active, passive, active, standby, et cetera. That, but that's stuff we don't need to know for the CISSP exam. But, um, but that one virtual IP address can be shared between the two. That's the whole idea behind this. Third answer choice says that the standby router provides failover support to the active router. Totally, that's what this whole thing's really all about. Um, so in, in an active passive design, again, there are active active designs, but again, don't need to know that for the CISSP exam. And then the last choice says that an active router can be manually preempted for say hardware maintenance tasks. And that's totally something that exists and I don't know if it's like a super big shining benefit, but if you need to take a router offline for some reason, if you have an FHRP type solution implemented, you do have the luxury of taking a router offline first preempting that router so that the former standby becomes active and now you can take this router offline and not have any disruption to service for your users, which is cool. Okay, let's tackle question number two now. 
Uh, this is a situation that is unfortunately all too common, and so we need ways to try and go in and deal with it. And the situation is, is that you have a system or systems in your network that don't support the use of uh, individual user accounts. Uh, it could be because the system only supports one account, or it could be because this system, um, say, has uh, uh, service accounts or something like that. And so there's a situation where passwords are going to effectively have to be shared between multiple users, which we know is a party fail. My question for you is, is when that circumstance occurs, how are you supposed to address it? What should you do? What's the best way to address this so that you can still have individual user, user accountability on the system? What can you do? There's your answer choices. Think about it. Click pause if you need to. Click play and we can have a discussion. All right, choice number one says that the way you fix this is by isolating the system or systems on their own VLAN. <sighs> no. What does putting them on their own VLAN do as far as helping you to resolve the fact that two, to, two or more people know the password to log in to do something with an account? Me being on a separate VLAN as a, as a server and then two or three administrators still knowing the password, the one password, to do stuff to me, um, how are you going to say which of those three people did it? And the answer is being on a VLAN doesn't help you fix that problem at all. So definitely not the answer that we're looking for. Choice number two says, we will change the password weekly and manually share it with each of the authorized users. That works. It's kind of lame, but it works. So let's say it's Monday. The manager changes the password, distributes the password to all the appropriate administrators who are gonna need access to this system. And then during that week, two or three different administrators log into the system at various times and do stuff using that password. And then you need to be able to hold somebody to account for something that was done on the system. Which one did it? You still have the same problem. The problem is just on a rolling one week cycle. So you haven't fixed anything. So manually changing the password and then going in and giving everybody the new password just means that you have the same problem, but with a new password. And I don't see how that helps anything. Choice number three is the correct choice. What you need to do is go in and use some sort of password manager technology in order to allow you to have passwords shared but still preserving accountability in individual um, user passwords while still it all being a shared password. Um, this has been around now for several years and uh, there's, there's a couple different products that are out there. Um, LastPass has some stuff that does it. There's another, um, there's another company called um, was it CyberArk that does it. I think there's another one called Centrify. Um, I'm not trying to advocate any of those guys. There's just you know, a couple different players in the game that can offer these kinds of features. But let's say that you have a system account that's on the, on the computer and it has a password and three or four different administrators need to be able to log into this different computer. And that's the problem is that they all need to know the credentials. So what a, uh, a company like CyberArk does is they offer a product that helps you manage that where you go in and you in effect will check out a password you go in and you say I need to log into system X and cyber cyber arc will give you the password for system X or the keys if it's SSH or something like that but you'll now have the necessary credentials to be able to log into system X you log in do what you need to do and then when you're done the cyber arc software will actually go and change the password okay so that now you are the only person associated with having been logged in doing stuff as that particular system account during that time, which means accountability is restored. Sweet, okay. So the next time somebody needs to log in, they gotta go to CyberArk and get a, the new password that's issued to them. They log in, they do their stuff. And then once again, when they're done, CyberArk goes in and changes the password again. So again, there's a variety of players out there in the space to do this, but this whole idea of trying to solve the whole we got to share credentials, but we're not supposed to share credentials issue. Okay. These password manager type solutions are um, enterprise password manager solutions are a potentially great fix for that. And that is definitely the answer that I'm looking for here is I want you to be aware of the fact that these types of technologies exist and can be implemented at enterprise level. All right, no more answers are right, but let's talk about them anyway. The next one says that you should remove the system from the network until you can go in and fix the issue. The system's on the network for a reason. Take, completely taking it off the network because you have to share credentials. Um, I 
doubt that's justification enough. Never say never, but uh, you know, th this whole issue of you know, system accounts or legacy systems that don't support user accounts or any number of little scenarios that might arise in any everybody's individual network, um, the solution of, oh, let's just take it off the network is highly unlikely to be a viable solution. So no, let's not do that. And the last choice on the list was to just assign one admin to do all the tasks on the system. Um, sucks to be that admin. Um, I guess if there was a bunch of admins who needed to log in to do different things and now we just dump it all on one person, then oops. Uh, but this completely blanks out things like, is that one person qualified to do all the different things? Uh, probably not. It's harder and harder and harder these days to be awesome at everything. And so um, that's, you know, even though that's technically possible, I can't imagine that's actually going to be a valid answer in the majority of circumstances or situations. If it is, bully. But for this particular question, I seriously doubt it. All right, two more questions put down. Appreciate you being here. Please click on the like button, subscribe if you're new here, all that stuff that actually helps to get other people to be able to find me. So if you would do that, that's awesome. And with that being said, bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.